Young people going to stand up real quick. Come on. Come on. Yeah, we gotta stand. Uh, put the shield of faith, which quenches all the fiery darts of the devil. We know without faith that it is impossible to please God. But you see, make no mistake, discouragements most, uh, most certainly can come up against us uh, because discouragement is the devil's major fiery dart. Discouragement is where the enemy tries to get you where you think that the way it is is the way it is. Yeah. And it causes you to settle for less and live under the privilege that God has, uh, has, has given you. See, discouragement is a state of mind that, and that's the devil's major fiery dart. But the only thing that can protect you from that fiery dart, from your faith, amen. Your faith is the only one because you need faith because guess what? When you see nothing, it's your faith that's going to keep you. You see, we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. And the thing about the devil, he'll show you his uh, his tools and his weapons. He'll show it and it looks like the world is coming up against you. And if you're not, if you don't have your shield of faith, on the wind. But you see, your faith lets you know hallelujah, that the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God from the pulling down of strongholds casting down imagination and every high thing that tries to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. It's your shield of faith. It's your faith that's going to keep you. Your faith. Your faith is a spiritual weapon. When the world is coming up against you, it's not your intellect that's going to keep you. It's not your reasoning. You've got to have faith in God. You have to believe what God said. And you got to hold on to what God said. I'm talking about how to stay encouraged. How to encourage yourself. You have to have the sword of the Spirit. Oh, come on, somebody. Which is the word of God. This is the uh, this is the, the weapon that will shut the devil's mouth. This is the weapon right here that will shut up his mouth. When he's trying to talk, if you throw some word at him, he don't know what to do with it. See, see when the devil was coming up against Jesus in the wilderness, and he said, he said, uh, 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 if, 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 if if, you, if, you, if you're the son of God, turn these bread into stone. Turn these uh, stone into bread. Jesus said, he used the word on them. He went all the way back to Leviticus. He went all the way back to, he said, man shall not live by bread alone. But seeds out of the mouth of God, I'm going to believe what my God says. And the devil got to shut up. The devil got to shut up. And finally, he, he presented Jesus all the kingdoms of the world in its glory. And the devil said, uh, if you just bow down and worship me, he said, I'll give you all of the kingdoms of this world. And I come to tell you, he can do that. He can because I want you to know he owns the world system. If you turn your back on God, guess what? He'll get you. He'll, he'll let you make six figures. He'll let you make uh, seven figures. Oh, he'll Get thee behind me. Get thee behind me. You see, put the word on. Get thee behind me, Satan. You shall worship the Lord, your God. The devil even knows that, that the Lord is his God. He just don't want to worship him. The, the devil knows that God created him, but he don't want to worship him. The devil is under our feet. And as Christians, if you want to stay encouraged, if you want to truly walk and talk, you have to cover yourself. 
And the last point, how to stay encouraged. How to stay encouraged. Be a person of prayer. Praying with all prayer and supplication. Pray for people, not just yourself. If you want to stay encouraged, it's not just about praying for your situation. But you've got to realize that it's not just about you. You've got to pray for others in the midst of what you're going through. You have to be able to pray for others. And God will give you the strength. He'll pick you up. He'll open up the windows of heaven. Pour you out blessings that you don't have room enough to receive. But I come to tell you, whatever you go through, sometimes you're not going to have somebody right by your side. Sometimes, I, I come to tell you, you're, the most ever you're going to grow is when you're by yourself. It's nice to have a church and this is what God has established because he told us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves one to another. We're supposed to be in church. But if you're talking about true spiritual growth, I'm not talking about knowledge, I'm talking about spiritual growth. It's in your darkest, most discouraged times of your life that you draw closer to God and you draw closer and you get the word down in your heart and God begins to transform your mind and you become just a hearer of God's word, but you become a doer of God's word, you begin to seek his face, you begin to diligently seek his face, knowing that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, amen, you begin to press to God, amen, like Paul said, I press towards the mark, said Christ Jesus, you begin to go, because guess what, you'll find out that he's your only help, yeah. when you find out that God is your only help, amen, I come to tell you, you'll never leave him nor forsake him, and say, uh, stay encouraged, man of God. Amen. Uh, uh, God is doing great things in your life. Be careful of the devil. What I got to watch him for? Right. He's already defeated. Yeah. He's already under my feet. I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry about him. Amen. I just got to stay focused on Jesus. Amen. And when God has delivered you over and over and over again, it builds your faith up. Yeah. It builds you up. And it strengthens you. So how do you stay encouraged and encourage yourself? I come to tell you, we have to encourage ourselves. Amen? You have to encourage yourself. Because sometimes the very people who are supposed to be an encouragement to you, they're the main ones that the devil is using to discourage you. And, and, and being that we are loving people, being that we are born again, being that we are saved, being that we are children of the Most High God, we don't really see it. We, we're still trying to play pity pat and be nice while people are trying to kill us and destroy us. And it's not people, but, it, but it's just people being used by the enemy. And if we don't see it, because you're not wrestling with people. You're wrestling with principality, spiritual wickedness in high places. So the enemy will get into people. He will influence people. He will, uh, he will uh, uh, press down on people. And he will get into their minds and, and get them to open up their mouth to hurt you. See, that's what happened with King Saul. King Saul, the spirit of God had, had left him. Amen. And this wicked, evil spirit got a hold of him. And all, all day and all night, all he wanted to do was kill David. And, and David loved him. And amen. And it's, it's a bad thing when you love somebody and somebody is trying to kill you. It's a bad thing when somebody when you love somebody and they're trying to destroy you. It's a bad thing. So David, his back was against the wall. But the Bible said he strengthened himself. Oh, he put his shoulders back. And he said, for God I live and for God I die. And God, you are a very present help in the time of need. You are my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? 
The Lord is the Lord of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came up against me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and failed. Though a host may arise against me, in this shall I be confident. One 